Hello everyone, this is Jim from Hanson's Phil Am Life. Today I wanted to talk to you about just what it is that Dumaguete is known for. Probably the most famous, well-known thing is Silliman University. Silliman University is home to mm, over 10,000 students. And of this number, around 300 are international students from 53 or so countries across the globe. Well, campus is 62 hectares and it has over 300 old acacia trees and they are big and beautiful. Silliman was established in 1901 as a Presbyterian school. It was the first American university in Asia and the when people see the Silliman building, the old original building, that's what they think of as Silliman University. And that building was actually a structure in the United States that the founder had disassembled, shipped over here, and reassembled, and that's where they first started teaching classes. Right now it's um, a museum. <clears throat> the next thing probably more people know about is Rizal Boulevard or the Dumaguete Boulevard. The Boulevard. It was built in 1916 and is about 780 meters long. It was named after Jose Rizal who is said to while away a few hours on this stretch of waterfront. Back then there was beach there. The boulevard of Dumaguete City is really where locals and visitors spend many hours walking, watching the ships out in the harbor and uh, the small boats going by and they eat at the restaurants in the street across, across from the boulevard or maybe at the food stalls that pop up in the evenings. Just toward downtown from the boulevard is Kazan Park. It's located in the middle of downtown and is the location of many historical objects including monuments of Jose Rizal and Maria Claire. The city tourism, is across the, tourism office is across the street to the east and then across the street to the west is the Dumaguete Cathedral and Belfry Tower. The church, which is actually the St. Catherine of Alexandria Cathedral, is the oldest stone church in Negros Island and was built in the 17th century. Now, the belfry was one of several towers and is the only remaining tower. That they were originally built to keep watch for uh, Moro pirate attacks that came from Mindanao. They were looking for slaves. This one is the only one that remains. And at the base of that tower now, you can light a candle or say a prayer. This is called the Grotto of Our Lady of Lords. And you can also buy religious souvenirs there. Now outside of town, up in Valencia, there's a place called Forest Camp. It's a fun swimming destination that has uh, <clears throat> natural pools and other exciting activities like zip lines. It also has a restaurant. Also up in the mountains, well, Twin Lakes Natural Park. And Twin Lakes is a natural place up in the mountains of Sibilan. It's about 30 to 60 miles from Dumaguete City. Lake Balsaseo and Lake Danano are deep freshwater lakes that were formed by the runoff from rain and stream deposits in these uh, craters. They are two nice lakes. They're separated by a ridge. But, uh, it's also a good bird watching area, but they have boating, swimming, and kayaking. Also up in Valencia is Red Rock Spring. It's a swimming area of natural hot spring waters. They have uh, two large pools. Then they have the natural rock bottom and uh, they have a hotel with a restaurant there. Another fall, 
Another place up in Valencia is a fall called Casa Roro Falls. This fall has a hundred foot drop that falls into a basin below and then forms a stream. Now there's a long trail down to this one, but it is probably the most photographed waterfall in Negros. It's definitely worth a trip. Pulling Bato Falls is upstream from Red Rock Springs and it is unique in that the red water fall basin down below the water where the water falls into is created by sulfur in the water. And this falls is usually very heavy with a lot of water coming down from the river above. But you want to make sure that you wear clothing that doesn't matter if it's going to be stained by the water. And this falls is located in Valencia and does not require a hike, so it's perfect for families. It's the highway goes up from Dumaguete. Neladhan Falls is about three hours away in Bayawan City, south and west of Dumaguete. It's down and around the other side of the island, but it's still in Negros Oriental. And this has a waterfall that's approximately 25 by 40 meters, but it is about a three hour drive, a pretty long drive. Um, <clears throat> up in Valencia, and also is the Philippine Japan Amity Shrine. This shrine will teach you a little bit about Dumaguete history in World War II. The shrine was built to commemorate the souls who perished in the war and also the surrender of Japanese forces on September 22, 1945. The shrine has a 30-foot tall, three-sided obelisk to reflect the three countries involved, Philippines, Japan, and the United States, and signified the end of hostilities in Negros <coughs> Oriental. The site is kind of difficult to reach. You can drive up to I don't know, probably a mile and a half from it, and then you're going to have to walk or have a four-wheel drive. Or you could walk it. Uh, Apo Island. This is a 24-hectare volcanic island off the coast of Darwin. And it's known for its abundant marine life like turtles, the sea turtles. And you can go out there and go swimming with the turtles, but you have to make sure that you don't touch them. And don't get too close. Uh, this is a, a marine protected area. Now, this area around Apple Island is considered one of the best diving areas in the world. If you're a diver, you would definitely want to visit there. The Manjuya Sandbar, which is north of Numagete, about an hour and a half, it's uh, been called the Maldives of the Philippines. It's near uh, Bias, which is, like I said, about 90 miles north of Dumaguete. You need to make arrangements to take a boat out to the sandbar. There are many of them. And uh, <clears throat> there's a number of cottages out there that are on stilts. They're part of the, the quaintness of this area. They sit on tall stilts above the, where the high water would be and you can rent these overnight and uh, stay in them so you would have to make arrangements for somebody to take you out there and come back and get you the next day not a problem though but you need to make sure you're aware of the local high tide and low tide because when it's high tide it's gonna be about neck deep water out there low tide sandbar is exposed so make sure you know when the high tide low tide times are so that you can go out and actually enjoy the sandbar i mean you can go out there and enjoy the sandbar walking around in three foot three foot four foot deep water but i'm thinking that you'll want to see the sandbar itself uh, the boat driver that takes you out there if you provide the food he will cook it for you so that all of you can have a little picnic he will partake in the food also. That's just common courtesy and that is the custom. In Dumaguete they have the Sandarat Festival which is um, held every September and it's that Sandarat means fellowship and outreaching. Or reaching out, sorry. Whew. 
The streets are full of drum beats and dancing during the Pasagarbo event. And the other event, which is the Pasagun they use dancing to interpret stories. The next month in October, middle of October, they have the festival of all festivals, the Buglasan festival. This is a, a province-wide festival that runs for about 10 days. And there's street dancing and showdowns every third Friday of October here in Dumaguete. The Talabang Mangrove Park and Bird Sanctuary is also north of Dumaguete. It's a 400 hectare area protected by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the DENR. And it's located near Bias, city north of Dumaguete. So you have the uh, Mangrove Park and Manjuid um, Sandbar. And there's also sand beaches up near uh, Bias, which is sand beaches that are closest to Dumaguete to the to the north. Now you should be, you should familiarize yourself with the major areas around so that you don't get lost. And there's Dumaguete, which is the main part of this area. It's the business resource of the region. And it's popular for shopping and restaurants and nightlife. Bakong, which is the next town north, it's one of the smallest towns in Negros Oriental. There are historical monuments and art museums catering to local artists and international artists. And it's just located just south of Dumaguete. The next town south is Dawin. That's the home of Apo Island and the Basele Hot Springs, which are located south of Bakong and Dumaguete. The, these hot springs are out in the jungle, so there's a small hike out to the north of the the uh, National Highway. Valencia is up in the mountains to the west of Dumaguete and there are three major roads going up to uh, Valencia. It's in the mountains so it's cooler than down in the city but it has a significant amount of agricultural with fruits and vegetables being grown there. And this is the area where most of the waterfalls in the area are, and they do also have some hot springs up there. Sibilan is the town to the north of Dumaguete. That's where the Dumaguete Airport is located. It's just north of town. So keep these things in mind. Try not to get lost. Have a good time. And there's the uh, Dumaguete tourism office downtown and the Negros Oriental Provincial Tourism Office is on uh, J. Blanco in between the National Highway and Hibbard and either one of these areas they can help you find all these areas give you information to get make arrangements so have a good time and if you like this video give it a thumbs up that will let us know that this is the kind of videos that you like and we will continue to try and make this kind of video. Also, if you like our channel, subscribe and click on the little bell and you'll be notified when, whenever there's a new video out. So thank you for watching this video. If you're still here, I really appreciate you watching and I hope to see all of you in the next video. Thank you.